thank you for coming to my channel. I am going to make a video about tombstones. I found some really, I'm sorry, I'm just going to switch this back a little bit because it's too much of a zoom in. Um, yeah, what was it? Yeah, so I'm going to do a video about the. Uh, hey everyone, and thank you for coming along to my channel. This video is going to be about a very peculiar and interesting tombstones and the stories behind them. Um, now, I don't know about you, but I am 100% going to be cremated. There is a zilch chance of me being buried six foot under in a coffin, absolutely no way. Um, because then I'll just be completely claustrophobic for the whole of eternity in my afterlife. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so I was, I was thinking about like um, death and, and things like that. And um, the worst, the worst way possible is to be um, buried alive. But I have one more before that though. Um, I can imagine the, the worst scenario for me, which will probably happen knowing how dramatic my life is, is being in an aeroplane that um, loses control and plummets towards the ocean. Now, as it's plummeting towards the ocean, it starts to break off in pieces. So I'm left in midair, still in my seat. Um, but then my seatbelt somehow gets uh, taken off, flung off, and I'm just free falling then into the ocean. But before I hit the ocean, Jaws opens its mouth and I fall directly in. <laughs> Sorry. So that's the first worst way to go. But the second way... <laughs> sorry. The second way is being buried alive. Now, I, I've been online and I put on, I put on Google um, real cases of people being buried alive and the amount of cases is just so gross. It's so scary. I don't know how anybody can be buried, you know, just in case. Um, <clears throat> but it, it tended to be more so in like the 17th and 18th century because they just didn't have um, the technology or the, you know, the, the knowledge back then. So somebody who could just be randomly sleeping and have like a slow pulse or something like that is instantly declared dead. Um, so it happened all the time. But there's just too many to go through. So I've, I've just got one that I'll share with you. And it was in 1889. And it was a lady called Octavia, um, which for some reason reminds me of Cinderella. Octavius, no, that was one of the mouse, mice, I think. Anyway, um, so she was married and they had a baby boy called Jacob. And unfortunately, he didn't last very long. He only uh, was alive for a couple of months. And this lady, Octavia, I can't say her name now without thinking of Cinderella, um, went into a really deep depression and uh, was bedridden and one day her husband came in the bedroom to check on her and she looked lifeless she looked like she was dead so he called in uh, the doctor and the doctor pronounced her dead and because it was in may they did a very quick burial and uh, i think it was the next day and just a very short time afterwards, a couple of other cases came to, um, came about with people going into this sort of coma-like state 
and it was induced by this bug bite. So her husband um, got wind of this and thought, oh my God, this could have happened to my wife because she had no prior illness, she was just depressed. And um, so he went rushing over to the, the graveyard where she was buried, dug up the coffin, but it was too late. Unfortunately, she, she wasn't dead, but she died in the coffin. Um, the, oh God, I'm getting goosebumps, it's so... Ugh. So the coffin lid had um, all the scratches, her nails were all blooded from trying to desperately, you know, get out. And um, the, the, the most disturbing bit about it is her facial expression. So obviously when they first initially buried her, she, would, she was expressionless, just closed eyes probably. But when they opened up and saw her, her face was frozen in a state of sheer panic. So it would have been like, <gasps> or something like that. So obviously she was buried alive, but didn't make it. So anyway, that, that was that one. But like I said, there's hundreds and hundreds of these cases back then. But then I, I found, to my surprise, I found something back in 2014, so not, lo not that long ago. Um, and it was in Greece, and it was a 45 year old lady that had fallen ill. She'd uh, gone into this private hospital and um, they pronounced her dead. Uh, the whereabout, the, how that, that came about is not known, uh, but they pronounced her dead. So they had a burial, she was buried, and these kids were in the same cemetery and heard this blood curdling scream coming from somewhere. And presumably they were alone because they were trying to search for where this scream was coming from. So there was no people around. And eventually came to this spot where the scream was, you know, louder and it was a grave. Called the authorities, blah, 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 the family, they all came along, dug her up and she was alive. It's unbelievable, she was alive. And so the family sued the hospital which I think is a very small compensation for what the hell has just happened. I mean, that, that poor woman who was buried alive, she's not gonna have a life now. She's just gonna be utterly traumatized and scared of any small spaces and, and all sorts. But this happened just a few years back, you know, so it happens all the time. So there's zero chance I'm being buried. Um, <clears throat>
on site. So they've linked the two together. And basically this, uh, this statue is of a, a man, so yeah, it could be Joseph, and he's butt naked. Uh, it's got a very nice um, body. There's no, you know, flaps and <laughs> bits and pieces. And um, he's just got a, like a cloth over his um, two grapes and banana. <laughs> Um, but, <laughs> but behind him is a, a skeleton holding him and it, it, the, his neck is a bit to the side and this skeleton head is kissing him and the skeleton has wings so kiss of death so there's like a few weird things around this firstly Usually on a tombstone, you say something very briefly about that person. If they were a son, a beloved son, if they were a brother or, you know, will be missed, that type of thing. Because it's something that you visit. So you want something to remember. But this sculpture only focuses on the moment of death that's it there's nothing else even the description is all about death the moment of death and it reads the blood in his veins grows cold and all strength has gone faith has been extolled by his fall into the arms of death amen so amen but this person must have been catholic or uh, Christian or something um, and so that's it so this whole statue is just basically capturing not the person's life but the the end of it the finish the final moment the actual moment where that person dies which is really weird because this statue was you know made obviously years and years and years before so did this person know that they were going to die and wanted to make this extravagant statue it just it's weird because usually when people die um you know their, their tombstone is something that is done at the end but this was obviously done years and years beforehand um so that but anyway the, the sculpture itself is just it's i have mixed feelings sometimes when i look at it i think wow that is so beautiful and incredible because it's so detailed and lifelike but then i can look at it and think oh why is why is there a skeleton with wings you know the the death um not only there but kissing this person um and how did the person doing this sculpture know that an angel of death has to kiss you before you you die and is taking you away and is holding you and all of this so there's loads of different bizarre things around it um, but yeah, uh, it's incredible to the point where I think it should be in a museum, not, not in the back corner of a cemetery somewhere. Um, but take a look, see what you think.